Yeah, we back. We back. Now, today's going to be a quick video, man. Now, I'm sitting back, as we all know, presidential elections in a few weeks. So Donald Trump, he's on the presidential uh, he's on the presidential tour. Right. He's making the rounds. And in the same way that the Democrats are trying to capture the black male vote, it seems that the Republicans are trying to make an effort to also sway some black male voters. But unfortunately, what I'm seeing is the Republicans actually taking the same playbook, the same tactics and strategies from the Democrats and trying to regurgitate them back onto black men in hopes of winning them over to their side. And what do I mean by that? Now, for many years now, we have clowned the Democrats for the gimmicky type of marketing that they do in order to reach out to black male voters. Now, what is that? Oh, we're going to try out some random rapper, you know, some random athlete, some random ball player, some random, some random stooge that didn't even finish high school and he gonna try it out in front of the cameras and be like oh man hey man this is the candidate right here man this is the guy right here man so it seems that the republicans are actually taking a page out of the democrat playbook now take a look up on the screen trump gains the support of several black male celebrities as kamala harris struggles with black men as the harris campaign struggles with black men trump is making gains with the democratic party's most reliable supporters now you sit back and ask yourself who are these prominent black men? Who are these leading black men at the Trump campaign got access to and spoke to and got the stamp of validation? Was it any of our elite businessmen like Tristan Walker who sold his company to Procter & Gamble? Was it like somebody like David Stewart, the biggest black businessman in America? And I would even still respect it if he brought somebody out like Steve Stout. Matter of fact, it doesn't even have to be anybody engaged in business. It could be any great legal mind, any intellectual that we have in the community that is well versed in the law, history, the Constitution, and that can really speak to the issues. Right. But let's see who did the Republicans reach out to. Right. Who did they get the stamp of validation from that they are now bragging about and they boasting about. Right. Oh, yeah, we got the cosign. Yeah, we got the cosign. Take a look up on the screen. Lord Jamar, one of the members of the hip hop group Brand Nubian. Lord Jamar recently came out supporting Trump in an interview. Jamar, a rapper, a producer, and an actor from shows like The Sopranos, slammed Harris and her supporters and applauded Trump's leadership. Now, listen, man, this is why I say the black man is politically homeless. Because some of y'all boys be talking about the so-called Democratic plantation. And I, and I hear you. That's a fact. But then when you migrate to the other side, you realize they talk, they doing the same shit. So it's like, damn, you know, the black man is politically homeless out here, man. Let's continue. Let's see who else they bragging about. Keep in mind, this is from Fox News, right? Fox News put this article out. So obviously they believe that these men are an accurate representation and are suitable ambassadors for the collective population of black men. Now let's continue. Kodak Black. Yes, Kodak Black. Fox News believes that the cosign and the stamp of validation from Kodak Black means that you are making gains among the black male population. And this is why I say the black man is politically homeless because both sides of the aisle are playing in your face, man. Both sides of the aisle are playing in your face. And this is why more and more brothers are simply becoming disillusioned with the political process as a whole. Now, let's continue. Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. Former Pittsburgh Steelers pro bowlers Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell joined Trump on stage at a rally in Pennsylvania on Saturday. Now, also at a recent rally, Trump brought out an individual by the name of trick trick some local joker from detroit who the only reason anybody knows his name is because back in 2014 he had banned rick ross from coming to his city because rick ross had to check in right another black man had to come check in with him like he is the boss dundada of the area right so if you can't come in and check in with him then you are not allowed to come do business in his city right in, in my city my so-called city right he's the king of detroit according to him right so rick ross couldn't come to detroit and make no money and conduct business because trick trick said you have to check in with me you know you got to come check in with me first before you can do you know handle your business you look safe, you look fine to me, you look excellent. But I have to ask you, okay, what is going on with you in Detroit? There was a, a show that you were supposed to perform, right? Right. Now it's like the headlines are crazy, the blogs are like, Rick Ross is fearful of his life, he can't come to Detroit anymore, right. so no flags on, what, what's happening? What's going on with that? Somebody is misleading our quite like, yo, Yo, we uh, went out to Detroit, you know, we had a gig to go to, you know, so um, we, uh, the team head over, you know, to the gig, and, uh, you know, I got my team, so my team is always in front of me, you know, just to make it clear, I never even made it to the venue. Okay. I never made it to the venue. Me and whoever this gentleman is, we never crossed paths. He never spoke with Rose, and I expect him to clarify that. 
you know, the promoter himself said, you know, let's get it fixed. We say, let's go to the casino. Shout out to Greek Town Casino. So we went back to the casino. And, you know, that's where we chilled. And that's when I got the story that that was supposed to be a mob gang. And, you know, and, you know, of course it ain't personal because I was paid and I was paid well. You under dig? And um, I just feel bad for those kids that stood out there six hours right. that wanted to see Ricky Rose and couldn't see the boss because someone padlocked the gate. Well, uh, concerning myself and that individual, it's none of your motherfucking business. That's a grown man. I'm a grown man. Grown men don't put grown man business out to the motherfucking public. Now, like I said, in a recent presidential rally, Donald Trump brought out as one of his guests, one of his, you know, celebrity endorsements, Trick Trick from Detroit, right? This sassy, feminine, washed up, so-called gangster. I'm a grown man. He a grown man. Grown man don't put grown man Bennett on the internet. Like, bro, listen, man. Anyway, run the footage. I'll be right back, man. Trick Trick. Where's Trick Trick? Trick Trick. Come here, Trick Trick. Come here. Maybe we should have him do a little rapping or something, huh? Come here, look at him. He looks good. He looks good. <laughs> you look good. Do a little rap if you want. Have a little What up, though, Detroit? If y'all know about Trick Trick, y'all know I'm about bringing it all to Detroit. So please welcome the 47th president of the United States as we make Detroit great again! Now, you heard when Trick Trick was walking up to the stage, what Trump say? Hey, maybe we should have him doing a little rapping or something. <laughs> now, listen, that incident between Rick Ross and Trick Trick, that happened about uh, 10 years ago, and I believe I was like, 19 years old at the time and even at that young age at 19 years old i was like bro this dude is a goddamn clown how the hell are you gonna block rick ross from coming to detroit for a gig that he was contracted to perform right how are you gonna stop another black man from coming to conduct business perform and earn for his family even at 19 years old i was like wow this guy is a damn clown and even back then i was thinking i know for a fact he wouldn't do that to justin bieber i know for a fact he wouldn't do that to tom cruise i know for a fact he wouldn't do that to Leonardo DiCaprio. Even back then, I knew. I was like, this dude is a damn coward. His aggression is only towards the black man. He only feels comfortable flexing his muscle against the black man. He only feels comfortable asserting his dominance against the black man. He only feels comfortable enforcing division against the black man. But when Trump comes around, right? When Trump comes to town, now it's all smiles and excitement, right? Trump is telling you, come rap like a damn monkey. But it's all good, though. It's all love, right? You don't got a hundred goons, you know, locking Trump out the goddamn venue. When the white man shows up, you ready to perform like a circus act, right? Where's that no fly zone energy against the black man? Oh, it's a no fly zone for the black man, right? But when the white man comes around, it's all love and camaraderie. You was up on that stage kissing so much ass, you already done crowned him as the president. He ain't even making it to election day yet. You already kissing his feet like a damn bro. Get this washed up has been never had a hit record. Rapper the hell up out of here, man. The reason why you blocked Rose from the venue is because you were jealous. You were envious. Because back at that time, Ross was killing the streets and you never been more than a local joker. Standing on stage next to Trump is the highlight of your existence. Bigger than anything you ever did in the music industry, right? You are known as that washed up motherfucker who was hating on Rose when Ross came to town. And besides that, that the only thing we're going to remember you for is standing on stage next to trump kissing his ass and already crowning him the next president and if he loses you're gonna look goofy as hell and what's worse is the republicans actually believe that the stamp of validation coming from trick trick actually carries any weight right as if this means anything to black men across the country if you think about it they're actually insulting our intelligence no different than the way that the democrats operate every four years when it's election season using the same tired gimmicky stereotypes as the democrats use every four years during election season no policy no agenda no nothing just gimmicks you know rappers athletes they're gonna skip over all the millions of brilliant minded black men and they're gonna pull out trick trick from a back alley in detroit talking about this is the guy he's the ambassador for black men across the country and that really shows how little they think of us brothers that's the reality you know that's the reality that's why i say the black man is politically homeless there are plenty of brilliant, capable black men who could have been consulted. Like I said, businessmen, lawyers, scholars, all kinds of men from all different walks of life that could have 
spoke policy, understood the needs and what really black men are going through, who could challenge both parties to do right by us. But for whatever reason, they roll out a man like Trick Trick, who the only reason he's famous is because he stopped another black man from, <laughs> from conducting business in the city. Like I said, using the same old tired gimmicks, same old tired stereotypes that the Democrats use, thinking that we are going to be impressed by an entertainer, an entertainer that we have not given the authorization to speak for us. Just like the Democrats, the Republicans, they, they don't want to engage the black man on a serious level. They have no policy. They have nothing that they're offering, uh, you know, coming to the table for the black man to even speak to the black man. So, like I said, if they wanted to really speak to the black man, there are many capable and intelligent black men they could have spoken to. But for whatever reason, like I said, they're more comfortable with the rappers and the athletes, the football players and the washed up rappers. You know, apparently those are the ambassadors for black men. Right. Those are our representatives. They speak for us and they represent us, apparently, in the United States of America. And like I said, man, that's why you do not tap dance for any of these political parties, man. Any of these political parties. And like I mentioned in my last video, I already spoken about how black men can really gain political power in the United States in my previous video that I dropped last night. But that's the reality, brothers. That's the reality. Um, the Republicans, they're bringing out Trick Trick. The Democrats, they're bringing out um, Usher and uh, Plies. It's really a joke, man. It's really a joke, but it is what it is. Anyways, man, it's a boy never card. It's Elaine back in the building. Yes, indeed. Cash shop in the description. Support the channel, man. Support the album. Peace. No. Feel like I'm 75. None of your team be full of them traders. You know that can never be mine. I'm grabbing a thought when I drive. I'm back in my zone and we young. She said that she ready to come be my wife. Yeah, hoping I don't do her wrong. I gave her my word and it's wrong. I'm whipping the best like a lamb. I mean, no chicken and lamb. Accustomed to call me the man. For power, come get acquainted. Coming for everything that I wanted. Feeling like Drake, but I really wrote it. Feeling like Kendrick, I'm checking names. Gotta roll up while I go insane. Got so much stress, I've been gated away. Stuffing these racks in this Louis case. One thing for certain, I'm about to shake. Keeping 100 and nothing less. Stick with the family since day one. Had to stay down in my day come. Had to stay down, but I'm never patient. Hop on the mic and I'm motivated. Hop on the mic and I drop a classic. Haters can't see me, they copping glasses. Back in the studio, making magic. Got a new tape and it's in production. Back on my business, I got a budget. Staying low key when I'm out in public. Feel like I'm 75. Know that your team be full of them traders. You know that can never be mine. I'm grabbing a thought when I drive. I'm back in my zone and we young. She said that she ready to come be my wife. Yeah, hoping I don't do her wrong. I gave her my word and it's bond. I'm webbing the best like a lamb. I mean, no chicken and lamb. Accustomed to call me the man. I never be up on the gram. I'm keeping that way undercover. She want me to tell her I love her. I told her I'm breaking the rules. I told her we making the news.